Knowledge is power. And this is Powerful Stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with the Weekend Radio Team. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. The phone lines are open at 731 1230. That's 731 1230 or toll free. Toll free. 1 866 820 that's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's fire up the news hour. Here is the Weekend Radio Team. Hi, happy Tuesday, everybody, and welcome to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. I'm Jennifer Solos, and to my right is Kurt Dukach. We have Perry Haichu. Lawrence on the board, he always makes me sound good. And Beach, our producer, who waves frantically at us and screams in the background silently. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what is holding up medical marijuana from hitting the streets in Las Vegas? The labs. Of course. The labs are holding this up. Um, after years and years of us getting the law um, in line to where we can have safe access to medication, we have, we're waiting on the labs to open up. And before that happens, the lab committee has to decide what's going on. Uh, we do have a lab committee meeting on Wednesday, April 1st at 3.30 on West Charleston. You guys can check, uh, check online for details. But Nevada labs um, are are saying that they're going to be about, I don't know, a month away from opening. Do you believe it? Sure. I think they've been ready to open for a lot longer than that. I think if they gave the green light, they could have their doors open almost immediately within a couple of within a couple of days, I would imagine. I, uh, I can't, uh, how do I put this? There's got to be a lot of pressure on that committee at this point to get that done. I mean, there are so many business owners who have been so uh, desperately awaiting the ability to uh, <clears throat> distribute this medic medication. So I would certainly hope that they will stick to their agenda and hopefully they can get some good progress done because as I understand it, they weren't able to uh, to do much last time around or they just continue to to push the agenda back and kind of kick that can down the road as the old cliche goes. So, uh, so yeah, if you we'll attend see. the meeting, please keep on topic. Yeah. Uh, just talk to the topic that is, um, that is in front of you and only speak to that topic. If you're knowledgeable about it, please don't okay. get up there and say stupid stuff like <laughs> weed is good, or you guys are holding this up forever. <laughs> and it's like, well, if you wouldn't talk for 20 minutes, it wouldn't be held up. Um, we'll, get it, we'll get it done. So please you go out and support the meeting if you are, if you, um, if you have the time, if you have the time and you have something legitimate to say for Absolutely. sure. All right. So how will the meds be tested? That's, that's kind of what's up for debate, right? They have, they're kind of deciding on uh, pesticide, uh, pesticide levels and heavy metal levels and, and all that kind of kind of stuff. Now, uh, if I'm correct, uh, do any other states actually require laboratory laboratory testing or is it just kind of like an option or i believe uh, that we're the only one that currently requires it um and we're uh, willing to open i think that there are other states that have come on with the medical marijuana that do require lab testing but they're w they're way back in the um let's get these things open and you know and, and write application um right you right. know that's that's the phase they're at so they're way far from opening um and also way far from testing there, the, some of the tests that the, that are going to be um, uh, done on the medical cannabis is that there's going to be a gross visual inspection. Uh, they're going to look at it under a microscope. They're going to grind it up, homogenize it, and make a liquid out of it, and then test that liquid. They're going to ha um, test it by mass spectrometry and chromato. Uh, Chromatography? It's a very long word. Anyway. Thank you. <laughs> but it's going to be tested. It's going to be tested from everything from potency to contaminants. Um, so we we are really set a high standard for here in Nevada, well, and I'd like everything to get open for sure. Well, let's just get this um, kind of squared away. I mean, there's so much confusing information being uh, being put out there and what I mean by that is you know I have a story sitting in front of me about a local marijuana delivery driver who got busted recently and uh, you know if, if you look at the details of the case you know the guy had 
like, oh my god, with 20 pounds of marijuana, 82 pounds of marijuana's active ingredient THC, and 53 guns during the raid on his business, Super Buds, in he 1901 Super Buds. South Highland. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, on the one hand, of course, you know, the dude had all this stuff, and he technically doesn't have a business license, but on the other hand, like I've been saying, I think the reason why these places have been getting a pass is because there's no access yet. The dispensaries aren't open. This dispensary bill is supposed to clear all that up. And once again, we still have people going to jail for distributing marijuana when we've passed laws to legalize the distribution of medical marijuana. So it's a little bit frustrating uh, to see. I mean, once the dispensary is open, man, you know, you're not going to you're not going to hear me complain about it anymore. But until that time, you know safe access yeah they gotta have the safe access you know that's what this whole thing is supposedly about mm -hmm. so you know <laughs> we'll see well the, the guy that got busted like three weeks earlier um uh jorge garcia 25 he and he was charged on trafficking of a controlled substance with intent to sell he had 23 guns two ounces of meth 24 that's pounds of marijuana right and fifteen thousand dollars in cash um, in two different North Las Vegas connections. So you think meth is the is the kicker there? I think that the law... Or guns. I believe that, well, they've put it out there. Metro has a whole team of people that watch these uh, delivery services and things like that. I think it's called Score. Score. Yeah, yeah, you got it. And Rodeo's and North Las Vegas. To break the laws. Yeah, so they're watching these people, and I really feel like they're kind of targeting what they believe is the worst of the worst in order to paint the industry to be as bad as possible. If they show the guy on TV distributing marijuana, and they're like, well, we found an arsenal in his house, he had meth, and all this stuff people start to soften that you know it's no it's really now, not I'm about gonna, medical marijuana you know I'm maybe they take i'm gonna take a different stance because i've been told this by a couple of different people oh no they targeted the worst of the worst to get them off the streets but they're allowing these other people who are operating delivery services a chance to cut and run well, get believe it. out of business mm -hmm. before you get busted yeah, and, absolutely. And if, from the report on Superbuds, they were selling to undercover officers who didn't have cards. And I've talked to a former driver of them who who confirmed that. He said that he got out, got away from them because he would go on a delivery, ask to see the card, and they wouldn't have a card. And the Superbuds would say, "Give it to him anyway." So I heard that the guy that was running the business didn't even have a card. No, he didn't have <laughs> no licenses. Well, you That's know what's crazy. funny is he went to one of our early symposiums about how to open up a shop, and he didn't, you know, and he should have taken that advice and tried to do it legally. I mean, well, he yeah, well, they caught, uh, they're catching federal charges now. Like, this isn't the state the feds picked this up now. And that's kind of what the Who, operator... Super Buds or Yeah, Grizzly? yeah, uh, Super Buds. That's what, that's what this whole article was really about. And, uh... Is them catching federal charges? Yeah, uh, Assistant U.S. Attorney Amber Craig, that name might ring a bell, said he, uh, un unlawfully distributed marijuana around town like a pizza delivery service through former clients. Craig, who called the the uh, the owner, McDermott, a danger to the community, said investigators found a small arsenal. And in his car, investigators found seven rifles and one with a silencer and two shotguns. Yeah. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see where this all goes once again. Do you think they'll still try to be picking the worst of the worst? Or do you think they'll just have, like, mass raids coming like they did in 10? Well, know? in 10, everybody was warned. There were a lot of warnings on the streets to close, yeah, sure. and people chose not to close. And guess what? They got busted. So, so I, I'm hoping that it's a kind of a shot over the bow right that they th they're firing the shot over the bow and they're saying hey you guys need to like uh, you know clear mm -hmm. this up you guys need to stop selling or you will get busted it's a nice warning <laughs> yeah and they, they did it say in all the articles that they are investigating other ones and they've probably already made the made the buys they need they're just waiting on the right times so. no doubt no doubt so oh. um on that note we have uh the first medical marijuana store waiting to open right now euphoria wellness just waiting on that testing they are set up and ready to go they have everything besides the product and they have that lined up ready to go too they say uh the paint is dry the windows are clean but the dispensary is still waiting for the green light before they start selling medical marijuana euphoria wellness is near south jones boulevard and west warm springs road is set to become the first medical marijuana dispensary to open for business in clark county Three months ago, officials said they would be open by February, but the dispensary is still waiting to get labs licensed by the state. Right. So those labs are the places that will test the plants, make sure the medicine is safe. State officials were not the only roadblock for dispensary. Euphoria had to hit pause for two months because of a lawsuit between a handful of dispensary owners in the state. 
Mm, no, yeah. big, no big deal. I wonder, like, are they very, uh, how do I put this, very effectively positioned themselves as basically one of the only real publicly uh, recognizable marijuana brand names so far, and they are not even open. Like, everyone knows Euphoria, and they haven't even sold a gram they, of cannabis well, yet. Well, I was going to say, they have a big billboard up on 95, sure uh, 95 South. But it's like... On they the have new, 95 South also, well, going toward Henderson in between, like... Well, how many dispensary licenses Eastern were issued in, in this in this county? To, or, it was 44. Okay, so out of the 44 owners... We almost always hear the news about euphoria, 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 and it's just like it's funny to me. Like, where are the other forty-two stores? Is there any any news from them about how you know any tours of their? Hey, you know uh, we've we've offered to help help them do openings. We offered you know to do different things with people, and it's just like everybody wants to keep their hands in their pockets until until they sure, sure. really are open. Yeah, euphoria actually spent money on a couple different billboards. Mm. Um, yeah, they've I don't been aggressive. Know, they've got Fair some enough. Stories. Yeah, they've, they've done had a lot some of stories. So that's how you get your name out there, man. Yeah, and there's still some of them out there that haven't even given their name out on the state list, hiding behind the the, the right. clause, you know. Yeah. So we don't even know who they are, <laughs> which to me doesn't make any sense. If you're going to be opening a business to sell to the public, you want your name out there. You don't yeah, want to. There's a bill clearing that up. Well, yeah, yeah. And speaking of dispensaries opening, Reno City Council unanimously approves the city's first medical marijuana dispensary. And so their uh, dispensary and growing facility, Sierra Wellness Connection, is going to be um, distributing medication out of Second Street near renowned regional medical, um, uh, me regional medical hospital. Hmm. And let's see. I don't know. We've, we've also got something out of Reno that talks about investigations of Live Free Wellness, which is not the same, same company. But there are, a lot of, there are a lot of questions about how our process work and the ranking process and everything mm -hmm. because it just seemed like everybody and their brother got passed through and got approved and everything. Well, one of the top ranking companies in Nevada uh, that has ties to company that have question marks in Colorado, Illinois, is called Live Free Wellness. They're uh, set to open a dispensary in both Henderson and Reno. So they've got, mm -hmm. they got a couple of them. Well, B Bill or Ben Burkhart is a part owner and, and marijuana grower for Live Free Wellness, and it's been uncovered that he's had legal trouble in several states. In 2009, he was convicted in California of renting a building to manufacture a controlled substance, which is marijuana. Okay. Um, he had his felony arrest, and he pleaded no contest. And then four years, four long years later, the charge was dismissed. But he, it's still that he did it i i don't know what he you know he maybe took lesser charges or whatever else but he's not a felon a convicted felon but then it says that um in he, this bit bit ben burkhart also he's being sued in class action lawsuits for allegedly giving out marijuana lace chocolate to the in the denver county fair i know you guys we reported on this <laughs> you remember that Yes. Uh, it's sickened seven, seven different people. He's also being sued by a former company that he's worked for called Beyond Broadway. They s allege that he used company materials uh, in an attempt to establish a marijuana business in Illinois and Nevada for himself, and he was successful in doing that in Nevada. Um, and that he also is illegally transporting marijuana seeds outside Colorado to Nevada. <laughs> Yeah, and well, yeah. So I mean, this guy, this guy, you know, he seems like a piece of work, and he's one of the top-ranking dispensary owners. So that seems yeah. like when when Channel Four learned of these issues, the anchor brought them to the bureau chief, uh, the Nevada Health Department division, Chad Westham. Uh, Chad Westham. Okay. And he said he would personally look into these concerns. Um, that was back in November. Uh, Westham said that I don't have any information on that handy, but we can certainly look into that and get back to you. So a bureaucratic yeah. brush off. Yeah. After that promise was made, uh, they, they went back to see what the state found about three months later. And a representative from the Nevada Health, Depart uh, Health Department told them in an email that they would not live up to that promise. In response to whether the report will prompt us to reevaluate the source, the answer is no. Our application review process is complete. So we know he's a crook and we just don't care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I got a story out of Carson City. It's kind of a similar story. Well, uh, minus the... Uh, personal tone just an approval notice 
Um, see, the Carson City Planning Commission has approved permits for medical marijuana sites close to Mound House and the Hot Springs Resort. Let's see. Uh, oh, right the commission on. approval also came for three separate medical marijuana establishment permit requests, with two combined for a site at 8001 United States Highway 50 East that attracted no opponents. A third proposal for a different applicant for 1588 Old Hot Springs Road, however, sparked an objection. The combined with separate applications for cultivation and production near the Lyon County line on Highway 50, both came from Five Seat Investments, LLC. The facilities will go on land zone general industrial, and the building there is about 3,100 square feet but it'll expand to about 5,000 square feet for the usage. Uh, let's see here. Mm, okay, here we go. Uh, the proposal for the cultivation only facility off Hot Springs Road, um, let's see, uh, the actual Hot Springs Resort sent an attorney or a lobbyist to uh, object to it. They said they don't object to medical marijuana per se, but the question is that the establishment's locating close to the Springs Pool because there's kids there and this and that. Oh, and, my god! Uh, you know, of course, that's, you know, they didn't even give that any, any merit whatsoever. They basically pushed it through, and they have 10 days to appeal it. I would imagine they will try, and then it'll it'll just move forward, and, you know, things fall through. Life, life moves on. So. Well, speaking of life moves on, let's go to a break, and uh, when we get back, we'll have our 420 moment. All right. Cannabis has been used as a healing medicine for over 5,000 years with no toxic side effects. Is it right for you? The professionals at Dr. Reefer are here to help. Now accepting new patients, make an appointment today at 428-0000. Bring your medical records, or if you don't have them, their staff will work to document your qualifying condition with a 99% approval rate. If you have any of the following conditions, cancer, AIDS, muscle spasm diseases, severe nausea, severe pain, Crohn's disease, glaucoma, or PTSD, call Dr. Reefer today for your free consultation and their money-back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Call 702-428-0000 to get your Nevada medical marijuana card today. The Vaughn Dank Group offers turnkey solutions for all your cannabis needs, bringing transparency and responsibility to a young budding industry. Helping patients by producing the cleanest, safest, and most potent medicines and infusibles possible. The Von Dank Group is a design, management, and consulting corporation with over 30 years of industry experience and knowledge of the dispensary, edibles, infusible kitchen, and large-scale cultivation of cannabis manufacturing facilities. Let the Von Dank Group help you grow your cannabis business from seed to green. www.vondank.com are you going to be in town this 420 weekend? Join Weekend and Las Vegas Normal for the 420 Freedom Festival. We officially celebrate this worldwide cultural event on Sunday, April 19th with a countdown to 420, New Year's Eve style, and a 420 midnight roast. We will crown Miss 420 Las Vegas 2015. Join us all for a fun-filled day of artists, exhibitors, entertainment, patient resources, speakers, and more at the Las Vegas Concert Saloon. Live music by Mokeshaw, The Signals, Lady Rako and the Sin City Prophets, Sensi, Bloodshot Bandits, New Age Tribe, and the Bourbon Brothers. The Las Vegas Concert Saloon is located at 425 Fremont Street in downtown Las Vegas. Tickets are only $20 and available at Dr. Reefer's offices. For sponsorships and booth availability, contact Las Vegas Normal at lasvegasnormal702 at gmail.com or we can at Kurt, K-U-R-T, at wecan702.org. <laughs> oh, God. Welcome back. That sound indicates it's time for our 420 moment. But before we go to that, uh, we'd like to give away a pair of Freedom Fest tickets to the first caller at 702-731-1230. Again, so. that's 702-731-1230. Okay. And today, our 420 moment is going to be Luke Langor, or Luke the Brave, as he's known as. Luke Langor was born to Brian Langor and Daniel Jones, born on September 21st, 1993, passed away this March 9th at his residence in Dana Point, California at 22 years old. Luke was a 22-year-old medical marijuana patient in California who suffered from a rare skin disorder called EB. EB is an inherited con connective tissue disease resulting in extremely fragile skin. Even the slightest friction like rubbing or pressure causes blisters, tearing, and painful sores. 
Butterfly children is a term often used to describe younger patients because the skin is said to be as fragile as butterflies' wings. Mm. Luke's entire life was marked with severe pain, night tremors, tremors, loss of appetite, insomnia, and isolation. The myriad of pharmaceutical medications prescribed by doctors only compounded his ailments, adding d drowsiness, irritation, gastrointestinal problems into the mix. At the age of 16, he tried medical marijuana to help alleviate his symptoms. It proved to be a miracle. In that time, Luke saw improvements in all areas, especially a reduction in pain and improved sleep patterns. Perhaps the greatest miracle, however, is Luke's positive outlook. It's hard dealing with that, what I have, but we are here for a reason, he said, and you just have to show that you can do it. But sometimes brute courage just isn't enough. Luke's bandages cost a fortune and consume most of his family's resources and large amounts of cannabis to make the oil can be costly and hard to find without the right help. Well, Luke was known as uh, Luke the Brave, and he was 22 years old. And EB is epidermolysis boliosa. It's a type of cancer um, that claimed Luke's life. He, at 21, he was informed that his cancer had returned, and he um, decided he, the, the squamous cell carcinoma, skin mm -hmm. cancer, is back. And he said, stay strong, hope for the best, and keep praying that this leaves my body, and then I'll get to uh, better ASAP. And so he tried to, uh, to going the natural route because the doctors mentioned about amputating his arm um, because of the cancer getting deeper and deeper. And then he said that he could move his arm without any pain when he was on medical marijuana. And that he went through a lot of trials and tribulations as a patient. And he became an emblem of the medical side of the industry. And so his name and his and his fight will go on. No doubt. No doubt. We, re we remember you. Yeah, Today. for sure, Luke. All right. We have a winner. Nice. Our winner is Duval. Hello. Hello. How's it going, guys? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Right on. Thank oh. you so much for listening and congratulations. Always, it's my pleasure. And so, we'll see you there. You get a pair of tickets. <laughs> All right, it looks good. It sounds good. I look forward to it. Just to remind you guys, this is the 420 runner. I, I'm a live show listener now, and uh, I'm reaping uh, benefits. Right on. <laughs> no doubt, man. Well done. Congrats, and Thank we'll you. be seeing you very, very soon. All right, I look forward to it. Thanks again, guys. All Great right, show. Great right show. on. Thank you. All right, I got a little more local news um, okay. about a Las Vegas based indoor farming company. Um, that just recently uh, debuted this week, uh, uh, an indoor farming thing. Uh, they set to unfold Tuesday when the Las Vegas-based Indoor Farms of America introduces its technology for water-saving indoor farming at the third annual Indoor AG Con at Downtown Grand. Um, there's going to be more than 125 businesses there. Um, for the last 18 months, uh, the company has been developing its technology and plans pending on what officials say leapfrogs exist, existing commercially commercially available systems for crop yields in fruits and vegetables. <laughs> That's it's what a, we're all about here. Same yeah. water. <laughs> and needless to say, the marijuana industry is showing interest. In of, course, this. of course. Well, <laughs> this vertical wall aeroponic um, technology is, is, is really new and cutting edge. It doesn't use a lot of water, and it's also vertical so that you're using less mm -hmm. space. Uh, so yeah, these I've, walls go up vertically. And you yeah, I've heard the rumors. Oh, you can grow, you know, 10 heads of lettuce in, this, in one square foot. <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. it's incredible. Mm -hmm. so and we'll with see. less water. So. Well, we'll see how it goes. Yep. Uh, well, a uh, small, small bit of local news before I step into some some other stories. Uh, there was a marijuana company that finally backed down in its MGM trademark lawsuit. Oh, goodness. Uh, this and now, still, life. This still? story came out on March 25th, 2015. So let's not get it twisted. It's not like this is an old, old story. This just happened. I thought this was settled long, long time ago. But here we are. Uh, after being sued by MGM, a... The marijuana company has agreed to stop calling itself M Life, a name almost identical to that of MGM's member rewards program. MGM Resorts International filed a federal lawsuit in Las Vegas in September, accusing M Life's wellness and sister companies of diluting MGM's M Life trademark and mm. cyber squatting on the website mlifewellness.com. That's what, yeah. Cyber I don't know if that's a, uh, a technical term or a legal term, but there you go. It's been coined. Uh, the two companies reached a settlement in principle months ago, which is what I thought, that was finalized finally last week, according to a notice filed with the court Friday. Of course, Dan Lutz, the C former CEO of M Life, 
uh, said he was surprised by the lawsuit and had no intention of infringing on MGM's trademark. We weren't even aware of the loyalty card that they had, he said. Oh, my. Adding with a laugh, I mean, I'm not a gambler, so the thinking behind M Life was as simple as this. M is for marijuana. It's like, dude. Um, You know, the thing is, is that opening businesses, you do something, you go on Google, you go on search. Bing, you go on any search well, engine, not, and you type in the name. Well, it's not like... Uh, I mean, that's not, not like MGM surgery. doesn't advertise. I mean, I don't gamble either, but I was aware of M Life because mm -hmm. of their aggressive marketing campaign. Mm -hmm. So there you yeah. go. But and, and anyway, you know, they they ended up getting denied for their uh, for their um, uh, permit for the they did because and, of past business yeah, practices yeah, yeah, had nothing to do with that. But anyway, we've got somebody on the line, and I'm not really sure if this is a name or a designation. Number six. Hello? Right. Um, uh, am I chatting with you uh, as a free spirit now? I suppose. Uh, yeah. Sure. sure. Okay. All right. But uh, let me uh, let me um, let me uh, throw big steam and big uh, big uh, big wolf life. Fantastic. Mostly number six. Um, he believes in freedom, right? Um, uh, what uh, what's your take on that? I believe that people should be free to do what they want as long as they don't hurt, hurt animals or children. The or property is absolutely damage. Absolutely correct. I, uh, uh, in number six's way, number six says, um, as long as I'm not harming anyone or their property, um, we're, we uh, we can be free dancers. Correct? Well, you know, I'm a free dancer. <laughs> no, 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 no. But but I'm just saying. I mean, I mean, uh, as per your philosophy, do you agree with my? Uh, do you, do you agree with that? Uh, do you agree with what I'm saying with you? Yes. In in, uh, in theory, yes. Okay. Well, so what's what I'm up? saying is now, well, the, what is up is um, let me bear with you and see if this makes sense. I'm gonna throw um, I'm gonna throw a couple of a uh, uh, couple of a uh, couple of uh, crazy steam on you. Um, mostly, um, what I'm hearing from uh, I've, I've listened to you guys from time to time, right? Uh -huh. And what I'm and what I'm hearing from you is um, uh, I, I use the goddamn method in the way, and I'm going uh, for some odd reason. Uh, you guys believe in the king, right? You go, well, well, the king lets us tell us what we should do. I disagree with that, by the way. Well, you know what? When in Rome, you got to do as the Romans do, and you are in Rome. But not. Oh but yes. Not really. Oh yes. But, yes, we are. Well, oh yes, okay, we are. Because well, you know what? If I could live with no money and no taxes and no man on my back. I would live that way. And, then, you know, I'm thinking of moving to a different country, like South America, because this is, America is too okay. oppressive. So, yes, I okay. do believe in freedom. But a as a theory, yes. But, you know, in practice, it doesn't work. We got to pay our bills. All right. Thanks, okay. guys. <laughs> All right. All right. So, we got... Well, we got some news coming out of Oregon here. Uh, two medical marijuana dispensaries face off in a cutthroat fight for prime Portland turf. So, okay. Uh, we got two dispensaries. One uh, one just filed a, a $400,000 lawsuit this month against the owners of another dispensary claiming the second business lied on a state registration application to poach the first business's clientele. Yeah, Oregon Oregon only allows one medical marijuana dispensary every 1,000 feet, and that's a problem for the Portland Medical Cannabis Club, which is the plaintiff in the lawsuit. The den, the Cannabis Club is practically next-door neighbors with its soon-to-be-open competitor, 420 Dank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very clever name choice. Yeah, when 420 Danks, the dispensaries will just be steps away from each other um, in the 46 and 4700 block of... Uh, Beaverton Hillsdale Highway. Well, get okay. used to it. That yeah. happens in California all the time. I could pick up a. Uh, I mean, I, you could swing a dead cat. Well, there were places in California like okay, the shop I worked at. There was a dispensary upstairs in the suite, and then downstairs there was another dispensary. Did we want it there? Of course not. Is there anything we could do? No. That's the you know, that's capitalism, dude. Sorry. Well, according to the the lawsuit, the owners of 420 Dank managed to submit their application at 8:33 a.m. Can, uh, the Cannabis Club, however, wasn't able to sim submit their application until three minutes later at 8.36 a.m. Well, the state well, approved applications on a first-come, first-served basis. Mm -hmm. So that leaves one without the operation to permit. Well, uh, and, and it was the, the one lawyers with the are taking them for a ride. They're going to lose that case. Yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah, they are. Definitely. Well, um, there's a... 
historic medical marijuana bill in Washington, D.C. That's kind of gaining a little bit of momentum or a lot of momentum, actually. It's a comprehensive bill that was recently introduced in the House of Representatives Tuesday, and it aims to deal a significant blow to the federal government's long-running war on medical marijuana. The Compassionate Access Research and Span Expansion and Respect States or Careers Act Man, that's a mouthful. Yeah, no kidding. Introduced by Representative Steve Cohen, a Democrat from Tennessee, and Don Young, a Republican from Alaska, is a House companion bill to identical Senate le uh, legislation from Senators Cory Booker, a Democrat from New Jersey, and Rand Paul from Kentucky, uh -huh. Republican. Uh, it was introduced earlier this month, and each bill seeks to drastically reduce the federal government's ability to crack down on state legal medical marijuana programs and aims to encourage more research into the plant. Uh, two new sponsors have jumped on recently, Senator Barbara Boxer from California and from Senator Dean Heller from Nevada, a Republican, has recently signed on as a co-sponsor, which I'm kind of surprised at, and we should kind of give a... Uh, a little thumbs up to Senator Heller for that and absolutely encourage them to uh, continue fighting on behalf of patients' rights. So. Hey, speaking of patients' rights, wh what about same-sex couples' rights? <laughs> that recently backfired. Oh, yeah. the uh, In Indiana, the... Um uh, what was it? The the freedom, the, the religious, religious freedom, freedom act. act that well, they passed. Well, you know, they they say that the gay marriage is allowed, and then and then people want to quash on the gay marriage situation, and so they they say this religious freedom act in what Indiana? Yeah, which protects businesses' religious freedom, religious views this comes and freedoms. From, this comes from that gay couple forcing that baker to make that cake for them and you know like i like people call me crazy but like i'm for the bill because i really believe that the gay community is kind of like mean and vengeful in nature sometimes and vindictive they're vicious they yeah like they're all tolerant until you're not with their agenda and you're demonized and you know called a bigot and things like that and it's like well, the they're really is, they're sore winners well, well i'll they're tell really you something sore i'll tell you something else capitalism will sort it out absolutely if they, i don't want to serve people in my business I can say I don't want to serve these people in my business, but guess yeah, what? My business and be yeah, and the, well, bigot because you don't want you know well, agree with and their lifestyle and choices. Then, and then my business may go out of business. Then there you go. Because you guess know. what? They are, they've already made stickers up, and most of the businesses out there have stickers on the doors that say "We serve everyone." And, and with a little so heart. Campaign. Yeah, mm -hmm. of course, sure. Um, everybody but, jump on the bandwagon. But the we nice, serve everybody. The nice thing about it is the, there, how it backfired some, is. Yeah, the, there's some creative creative stoners out there that. Uh, mm -hmm. a, a filed uh, filed for a business for the First Cannabis Church of Indiana uh, as their business religious freedom, and they got hey. granted their application I mean, last. Hallelujah! Night. Hallelujah! Unintended, <laughs> unintended consequences it, of stupid legislation, man. <laughs> yep. that's right. It's it's our religious freedom to smoke pot in church. And well, what you know? And, and Perry says, "Wait, wait! Don't you, discriminate. I can dab." Well, you, yeah, no kidding. Well, you open those, you open those doors, and people are going to walk right through them. You know, and there you go. So let's let's kind of hope that that continues, and maybe we'll see some more of that coming around. Well. I don't have it on paper, but there was a story I read that I kind of wanted to touch on you guys sure. about. We were talking about it in pre-production. Um, Tommy Chong got fired today from the National Cannabis Industry Association. Fired him as their as their spokesman uh, for Lobby Day in D.C. Uh, and why, article, why is that? Well, the article said that. Uh, <laughs> how do I put this? The article said that Tommy doesn't represent the uh, type of person that they want to affiliate themselves with anymore. They want to move away from the cliched uh, stoner um, stereotypes that have been perpetuated oh. by people like Cheech and Chong and Jeff Spicoli and characters oh. like that. So these so scumbags will ride on somebody's coattails until, until they don't, they don't need, need them anymore. anymore. Yeah, and that was that's kind of the whole thing is I'm all for, look, I understand where they're trying to go. They need to move it. You know, it's suits and ties now. It's not tie-dye anymore. You know, we're trying to talk sure. to congressmen and things like that. Sure. But to be so dismissive of someone like Tommy Chong who's done so much and dedicated most of his adult life to the movement, whether it yes. be for recreational, medical, or you he know, served his time in yeah, jail. He's done prison under time. harassment. He, yeah, all that stuff. And they were really just kind of—they didn't say, "Oh, you know, we really, 
really love Tommy and we are respectful of the contributions he's made over the decades and he's willing to pass this torch to the next generation of activists but that's not what he said he, he just got kicked out the back door like yesterday's trash and that's kind of the tone that the article took and that's my problem so, with it and, and, and that's my problem with it too because not only that you need to be respectful of people that came before you and were pioneers and and he's yeah. been shot well and, the thing you know, is what have you done for me lately is the attitude they have I think well he might yeah, have started out as the typical stoner genre and a comedian on it but he became a medical patient he had prostate cancer and oh, he yeah. cured it with cannabis suppositories well that's so, jeff was commenting on the story you know jeff and he was just oh, like yeah. i would much rather listen to tommy talk about his personal experiences curing his cancer with these you know medical marijuana uh suppositories and things like that rather than hear some lobbyist from asa bark at me all day mm -hmm. yeah know. and the thing is about ncia it's, it's great to have a business image but you need to you need to not only have that business image, but you need to have a sensitivity in business. And if you don't have a sensitivity in business, and you keep continually grind people under, you know, under your plow, then it's going to come around on you. Yeah, it just hurt my soul a little bit to hear that, you know. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. It is very hurtful for sure, for sure. All right, um, we have Forest Grove may ban medical marijuana shops downtown in Oregon um, through a major corridor. And the reason okay. is, is that um, they have to have their state rules in Oregon about their commercial shops. They have to be located in a commercial, industrial, mixed zone <laughs> use or agricultural land. They can't share a location with the grow site. They must be outside a thousand feet from the property line of schools that are attended primarily by minors. This doesn't include uh, universities. They must not be within a thousand feet of another medical marijuana facility's property line. Um, they they have um, they have broken these rules. I guess they have some type of ban in that area for medical marijuana after this business has already gone up and and running which is weird mm -hmm. because they're up and running and then and then they decided to ban areas certain areas and this is what happened in california with a lot of municipalities absolutely of things course. got up and running and then and then the the city council or county commission decided they didn't want medical marijuana and then oh, that happens shots. all the time i remember there were companies that opened casinos in illinois a long time ago and they were like oh this is great we're gonna do good and then a new governor new governor came in and passed they passed this bill it was damn near a 50 percent gaming tax and it almost uh taxed them out of the ability to uh to be able to operate but you know you can't just close the doors because you spent all this money open in the place so you know they get caught in these catch 22s uh local municipalities and even on a state level go back and you know reciprocally change laws all the time to burn people <laughs> happens all the time and I, I got another short story out of Oregon. sure what's up um, this guy named Tom Burns was the former marijuana policy advisor for the Oregon Liquor Control Commission, and he got fired on Thursday for sharing an internal policy document with a Portland lawyer, and then he got caught lying about it. And uh, it's just one of those things like, you know, we were just talking about, you know, people getting fired and Tommy Chong got fired and this and that. And since we were on Oregon, I thought this would tie in nicely. Sure. Um, the agency spokesperson, sp spokesperson Tom Towsley said Burns had shared a document with Amy Margolis that agency staff and marijuana industry representatives had worked on. Towsley emphasized that Margolis, who represents marijuana growers, did nothing wrong. So the attorney that was getting the information on behalf of the growers technically didn't do anything wrong. They're placing all the blame at the foot of the, uh, the, uh, the control commissioner who chose to leak the documents. You know, I, I think it kind of takes two to tango, but they're really kind of laying the blame on this uh oh okay she was the unwitting recipient of a confidential document you see that's that's freaking bs okay well if she's <laughs> on a you know then the person that gave it to her should be it should go right down the line but that's the whole thing. It was just from him, and it was an email and blah blah. Like, and you know, oh, I uh, didn't, I didn't mean to send it to well, her. Yeah, so therefore, I, I I'm, didn't. I'm not culpable. Yeah, okay. yeah I didn't. Uh, you know, purposely. <laughs> Put the subject title and send an attachment and send it to only your email. Yeah, it was an accident. Hey, do you guys know that New Mexico recently uh, they had a bill to decriminalize marijuana? 
I heard whispers new. about it, but I don't know much about it. Well, it's called SB 383. It's a bill that would have decriminalized marijuana throughout the state. SB 383 would also have replaced criminal penalties for possession of up to an ounce of marijuana with a $50 civil fine. Uh, it also would have removed the possibility of jail time for possession of up to eight ounces. Wow. But? Although <laughs> although SB 383 passed through Senate with a bipartisan vote, the House did not even take it up. Oh, come on. Yep. So basically it died in the House. Uh, maybe, um, maybe next year. So it, it, they chose not to, um, not to review the bill that would have reduced punishment for individuals who possess a substance that is safer than alcohol. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, I think what Mexico. probably killed them was the eight ounces. If they, that's a lot. Yeah, man. that's a lot for anybody to be carrying around anywhere. Like cut that in half. You know. <laughs> so, all <laughs> right. Well, traction. I think it's time for our second break here, and we'll come okay. back with some more stories. Oh, there's some more. Finally, Nevada medical marijuana dispensaries are opening, but you must have your medical marijuana card to get inside. Call the friendly team at Karma Holistic Health Foundation, toll free, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Karma Holistic Health Foundation will give you legal access to medical marijuana. All veterans receive a discount, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Are you going to be in town this 420 weekend? Join Weekend and Las Vegas Normal for the 420 Freedom Festival. We officially celebrate this worldwide cultural event on Sunday, April 19th with a countdown to 420, New Year's Eve style, and a 420 midnight roast. We will crown Miss 420 Las Vegas 2015. Join us all for a fun-filled day of artists, exhibitors, entertainment, patient resources, speakers, and more at the Las Vegas Concert Saloon. Live music by Mokeshaw, The Signals, Lady Rako and the Sin City Prophets, Sensi, Bloodshot Bandits, New Age Tribe, and the Bourbon Brothers. The Las Vegas Concert Saloon is located at 425 Fremont Street in downtown Las Vegas. Tickets are only $20 and available at Dr. Reefer's offices. For sponsorships and booth availability, contact Las Vegas Normal at lasvegasnormal702 at gmail.com or we can at Kurt, K-U-R-T, at wecan702.org. You're listening to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, produced by We Can, the wellness education cannabis advocates of Nevada. We Can is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you're interested in sponsoring us, donating, or advertising on this radio show, please contact our advertising department at 702-218-5226 or Kurt, K-U-R-T, at WeCan702.org. Oh, welcome back, everybody. Happy Tuesday. This is Nevada Cannabis News Hour. Um, and I'm Jennifer Solis. I have everybody in, in the uh, booth with me. Kurt, <laughs> Perry, Lawrence. It's all tight in here. And Beach. All right. Um, we were talking about New Mexico when we left SB 383 that died in the house. Um, there also was a HB 120 that would have declared... Um, even a small amount of THC per ml of blood as people driving under the influence. So this is good Ooh. that it didn't pass because we all know that you, you can wake up with certain um, mls per, of THC in your blood and you are not impaired. I could go a week without using and probably still fail a test. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. If not a month. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> I, don't I don't know, know about that. We'll I don't see. know about that, but maybe Dr. Dabs down there. <laughs> All right. A, that's a great name, man. I like that. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll take it? All right. So I got a little news out of New Jersey. You know you know what I, what I happened out, out there last week? Hard telling. <laughs> well, a group of New Jersey activists made good on their word to smoke out Governor Chris Christie's backyard. Oh, <laughs> This sounds and exciting. Right? They did so both loudly and proudly. From lifeside bongs with the legalization message to retired cops, hundreds of New Jersey cannabis supporters showed up on the Trenton State House steps with one clear message just legalize it. Brazenly and freely lighting up joints throughout the event, supporters yelled, one, two, three, four, smoke, 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 smoke some more. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that was going to end. <laughs> as, as is tradition, the crew lit up in, in unison at 4.20 p.m. 
as is not in tradition in New Jersey, it sounds like not a soul was arrested, according to this glowing report from the NJ.com. Oddly enough, a pot-themed weed mobile received a police escort during the event, and normal bystanders what? in Trenton ended up randomly joining the march out of curiosity and support. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Clearly, this event was another peaceful, successful protest that shows the strengths of the cannabis community. Yeah, yeah. Nobody got to, nobody got the, arrested. You gotta yep. Pump the brakes on that. You just told me that the weed mobile got a police escort in Jersey, correct? Yep. And, okay. a, and, and it wasn't a, to and jail. And a parade and, and followed it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I so, got a follow-up story in New Jersey after you're done with that, man. Go for it. So if cops in New Jersey uh, under the weed evil devil Chris Christie's reign won't even make arrests for this type of performance art, then we are truly living in a new area. Ooh, that's what I got to call lighting up in public performance <laughs> art. That's very Performance clever. art. Yep. Well said. Well, <laughs> another st- <laughs> What's another that story out of Jersey. New Jersey, New Jersey puts Christie on blast for block- blocking medical marijuana program. Earlier this week, New Jersey New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, he you know, this guy hates weed like Nancy Grace oh. hates, hates weed. Oh. Uh, oh, he I called vomited in my well, mouth. They were Nancy talking Grace. about marijuana tax money and he's like, That's blood money. I won't take that. And this is the guy who was like Where's We're gonna do sports betting and this and that and you know, gambling and this and that, but he's just like, Oh, that's blood money. It's like, dude, get uh, like well, the thing is, get off your soapbox, man. If he's you know, he wears <laughs> diamonds, he's probably given his wife diamonds. That's blood money more than anything. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> unless you trade you know, unless you do your homework on him, yeah. Yeah. Um let's see here. Okay. In response to Christie's outlandish and erroneous claim, the New Jersey Assembly has taken direct action by, quote, rebuking the Christie administration's handling of the state's medical marijuana program. Resolution ACR 224 was approved yesterday and justly claims that Christie has unnecessarily and for no legitimate reason prevented New Jersey's approved medical marijuana program from flourishing. Since passing since passing the Compassionate Use of Medical Marijuana Act of 2009, Christie has done everything he can to ensure as few patients as possible can access the material. That's finally going to change whether he likes it or not because he, he cannot veto the measure. Should the assembly instead it pass the measure, the health department will have 30 days to sync up its regulations with that resolution. Even better than that, should the health department fail to comply, the resolution can be enacted a second time, which means... <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. That means it would make the regulations automatically go into law. That means New Jersey's flagging program with a mere 2,000 registered patients could grow substantially. In addition to this, two medical marijuana bills have already been approved by the Assembly. One of these bills makes patients with PTSD approved for medical marijuana, while the other allows facilities to trade product. New Jersey is getting greener and... Christy finally dug himself a hole he'll never climb out of, according to this editorial. What a turd he is. Well, I you mean, know, he's going to be a strong primary contender, too, so don't kid yourself. You know, I don't think so. I kind of think it's going to be Bush Clinton. I, I really do, because we'll, we'll see. who was that guy that, that just is out of the gate? I've heard that uh, Bush is talking to Sandoval already for a VP spot. Yeah, he's the front <laughs> runner as the vice president under Bush. I don't like really? that. Yeah. Lee. <laughs> oh, he, hello. Our, our governor hasn't impressed me much lately. He's trying to raise I don't taxes. know. No, no. He, he, he's making me mad. You know what he did? He Well, he, did, he didn't He did veto our uh, SB 374 and it went into law. So we've got, you know. No doubt. Okay, fair enough. So yeah, he, 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 signed, we, he even signed it for us. Yes, he signed mm-hmm. it. He knows which mm-hmm. way the wind is blowing. So that may not be so bad. Yeah, fair enough. All right, do we got anything? What do we got? Because oh, I got, I got Philippines of, news. Oh, I got tons of stuff from Alaska even. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's see here. The senators are postponing the debate on the Alaska marijuana crime bill. The Alaska Senate's discussion of a marijuana crime bill was put on hold until Monday after two amendments were offered too soon to be studied before Friday's floor session began, lawmakers said. One amendment to be introduced by Senator Pete Kelly, a Republican from Fairbanks, deals with marijuana concentrates, and the other would remove marijuana from the list of controlled substances and state laws and would be introduced by Senator Bill... Oh my, uh, Wylachowski, huh. a Democrat from Anchorage. Okay. The bill up for debate, Senate Bill 30, addresses marijuana and Alaska's criminal statutes and was introduced as part of the response to the initiative approved in November that legalized some recreational uses of the drug. The bill has changed as it makes its way through the Senate. The, judici- the Judiciary Committee version, which made marijuana a non-controlled substance, was later replaced by the Finance Committee's version, in which pot was placed back on the controlled substance schedule. After being delayed Wednesday, the bill was scheduled to be heard on the Senate floor Friday. However, two amendments were brought up right before the floor session, said uh, Senator Coghill, a Republican from North Pole. Yes, that's a place. Uh, <laughs> I was wondering. Co- Coghill said senators needed a chance to review the two amendments before bringing them to the floor. Okay, well, they've said that a couple times. Uh, let's see. Kelly was planning to reintroduce an amendment restricting marijuana concentrates. He got the amendment drafting really late, so it was too late to bring it up to the floor. Uh, let's see. 
Mm, the second amendment was to be reduced. Yeah, okay. Well, that just kind of repeats the same information again, but I kind of have an update on that. They just took a vote on that recently, and the concentrates and edibles ban was defeated. They passed that version of the bill, but that part got taken out, which is like, that's huge because it was going to make all concentrates and edibles illegal after like 2017, oh two years after the law went into effect. But, you know, they, they're, they're a couple of little advocacy groups if they're doing some really, really good work and uh, they're getting it done. So well, then the thing about concentrates, uh, the thing about concentrates is that some people that have extreme pain, you take one dab and you're fine. Um, those same people could smoke joint after joint after joint or take edible after edible and have to have a, a, a quite a bit of time lag before it, the medication goes into effect. I mean, you know, you, we all know with an edible, it could take 30 minutes, an hour, 45 an hour. minutes, an hour. I, uh, I like concentrates because of the potential social acceptance in that emerging industry what i mean by that is if you're walking down the street and you see a guy smoking a joint or hitting the pipe i immediately think you know what a d-bag you know blah 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 because we have the <laughs> it's just so publicly offensive like oh people are walking how could you do such a thing or whatever if i have my little vaporizer pen with my concentrate in it and i'm walking down the street puffing on it everyone thinks it's an electric cigarette and nobody knows the wiser you might smell it for about a split second and then it's all gone and that's it if we really want to be accepted in society we kind of have to try to blend in and, and as I, I guess Republicans use that word assimilate a lot. So, you know, we kind of try to assimilate into, uh, into well, that's why culture. We do, you know? That's why we do edibles. But I mean, how I want to put to you, how offensive is it in California now to smoke a cigarette or an e-cigarette in public? I mean, people in California will swallow their tongues if you're smoking tobacco, not, not yeah, cannabis, no doubt. tobacco. Yeah, yeah. I agree. So it, it, uh, tobacco is almost becoming passe, really. It is definitely yeah, well, for sure. You know, it doesn't get you high and it stinks. So yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, and it costs too much. Oh yeah, yeah. including your life. Yeah. All right, well, let's talk about Philippines. And why are we talking about Philippines? Because our treasurer has recently now moved to the Philippines for a nine-month uh, vacation. <laughs> it's good to be the fact, fi fact finding mission. <laughs> fact finding mission in the Philippines. Um, one Direction went and pa played in the Philippines, and they're getting fined. Um, that band, boy band One Direction, <laughs> okay. is being penalized for hypothetically smoking pot. How so, can so they suggested like what they made like the j motion like they're smoking a joint on stage and got fined or something? Well, <laughs> not only that, but it they made a video that uh, that shows them smoking. Uh, two of them smoking a joint so they don't know it's allegedly a joint they don't know that it's a joint well, but they're gonna find them <laughs> they're gonna find them five thousand dollars each for what they do on a video when i was young i remember having discussions with my friends about how we would roll our joints with the roller so it looked more like a cigarette and we would hold it like a cigarette instead of holding it like a joint so when people would just take a look at us you know that's what they would see and i think you know just just use your heads kid just Hold it between your two fingers like a cigarette. <laughs> and a quote, Cost him 20 grand. And a quote from anti-drug advocate spokesperson Christine Ching said, We want to see their pure, raw, untainted talent on stage. Yeah, yeah. We don't want to see their, you know, their drug influence. But you know what's odd is that their drug influence is probably what made up part of the songs. Of course, hmm. of course. No doubt. Hmm. Yeah, well, hmm. People over, Things that make overreacting you say, hmm. for nothing. All right, um, Dr. Seuss in a San Francisco Green Cross dispensary. If you'd like to see Dr. Seuss rare uh, Dr. Seuss art collection, you can go on Google and look up Green Cross Dr. Seuss collection or Green Cross San Francisco dispensary. Okay. Um, you can see it on, through the 3D storefront Google View tour. All right. Oh, we're getting our uh, we're getting our one minute warning. So let's get some announcements out. Okay, uh, so elections are still going on. You can go out and vote. No doubt. Uh, let's see. We have our executive and volunteer weekly meeting Thursday from six thirty to eight thirty at the weekend corporate office at seventeen seventy one East Flamingo. Come on in and work. Uh, right. We have the independent laboratory testing committee meeting Wednesday, April first, three thirty p.m. at thirty eight eleven West Charleston Suite one twelve. Weekend first Friday booth is at uh, April third 
uh, let's see. For yeah, five come on out, get your Freedom Fest tickets. Yep, get your Freedom Fest tickets, definitely. Our Growing Nevada classes this Saturday at 4 o'clock. And, of course, our Freedom Festival is Sunday, April 19th at the Las Vegas Country Saloon. And, uh, yeah, also April 2nd this Thursday is the 25th anniversary of the UNLV Running Rebels uh, victory over Duke. Woohoo! <laughs> Woohoo! Woohoo! All right, you guys. So make sure if you guys want to learn how to grow, you can come out to our growing class this Saturday. But until then, be safe out there.